The documents now attributed to Bradley by the US military include the Afghan War Diary, the Iraq War Logs, and the US diplomatic cables, which include the Guantanamo case files. These documents have revealed numerous facts that have been kept secret from the American public, involving war crimes, civilian casualties, torture, and corporate influence on foreign policy. These documents have served as primary documents for thousands of articles in outlets such as the New York Times, Washington Post, and the UK Guardian. Collectively, they have provided Americans with an unparalleled window into the reality of international diplomacy. And now the man of the hour, David Coombs, Bradley Manning's defense attorney. This is his first public presentation. He's a lieutenant colonel in the Army Reserves. He's done 12 years of active duty. He's been practicing and teaching criminal law for 15 years, and he's highly respected by his peers and colleagues. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome David Coombs. Well, I, I, I think Bradley is pro probably the, one of the more intelligent people I've ever met. Uh, Brad it has the ability, I think, to talk about a wide range of topics. He's a young man, obviously, though, and with that he has limited experiences. But Brad does a, a lot of things really kind of from the heart. He tends to care a lot about people. And so his conduct and his actions are usually driven by that. As far as his mental state or how he is far, uh, being, I guess, uh, of, a, of a mind today, I can tell you that he is very excited about having his case go forward and it's in the process now. It's been a long time. Brad's treatment at Quantico will forever be etched, I believe, in our nation's history as a disgraceful moment in time. Not only was it stupid and counterproductive, it was criminal. It was for me watching it the most devastating day I've spent in a courtroom. I was in tears from beginning to end watching this young man having faced really some of the worst, most punitive punishment by our government and yet be able to testify with incredible, incredible dignity. David Coombs had Bradley Manning get off the witness stand and actually, root with a ruler, showed the size of the cell he was in in Quantico, eight by six. He showed on one wall where the bed was a rack, on another wall where the toilet was beneath the washing bowl, and it was a cage that had, you know, a lace like uh, squares in front of it, um, and across a guard sat, and then there was an observation booth. And the light was on 24 hours a day in this cage that Bradley Manning was in. But it turns out those same people cared about something more. And what they turned out to care about more was the media impact. And for that, I must thank each and every one of you here today. I must thank each and every one who is listening or watching. Because without you, change would not have happened. Your actions resulted in Brad being moved from Quantico to Fort Leavenworth. Make no mistake about that. And the motion that we were doing, and, and unfortunately still are, is the unlawful pretrial punishment motion. And it's taken longer than expected, but I must tell you I'm not really that disappointed by that. I'm enjoying my opportunity to cross-examine those who had Bradley Manning in those conditions for nine months. During the night, he had a face sleeping the light. If he turned away to go to sleep, they came in and they woke him up and forced him to face the light. During the day, he had a stand in his cell all the time, except he could sit on the bunk as long as his feet were on the ground. He couldn't lean against anything. 
8, 10, 12 hours a day. He was supposedly on duty. And then we saw a video. The video was heartbreaking. The video showed Bradley Manning being forced to take off his clothes. He's on one side of the cage. Put them in a mail, in the, one of those mail slots with a tray, and the guards take them on the other side. And that night, of course, at, at the count, Bradley Manning was naked. And from then on, during the day, all he had was his briefs, and at night, he was naked and had to sleep under this rough blanket. When I think about these things, I think about what happened to our Guantanamo detainees and what are called the Rumsfeld techniques. Bright light, stress positions, no clothing, solitary. When I'm in the courtroom, I stand up and I look to my right and I see the United States government. The United States government with all of its resources, all of its personnel. I see them standing against me and Brad. And I have to admit to you, that can be rather intimidating. And I was intimidated. Especially when the President of the United States says, your client broke the law. Especially when Congress members say, your client deserves the death penalty. I want to tell you, though, today, as I stand here, I'm no longer intimidated. I am not intimidated because when I stand up, I know I'm not standing alone. I know I'm not alone because I turn around and I see the support behind me. I see members here today in the audience that are there every time we have a court hearing. I see my, what I now I'm going to affectionately call the Truth Battalion. Those who wear nothing but a, well, they wear, wear other things, but they wear a black shirt. <laughs> it has the word truth on it. And they're behind me. And when I look there, I know that I also have unlimited personnel and unlimited resources. But perhaps the best evidence for me that I am not standing alone when I stand for Brad is a website called IamBradleyManning.org. I personally have to tell you I go to this site at least once a day. I go to the site when I need to recharge my batteries after working a long day on the case. And I just peruse the photographs people with a simple statement in front of their face. I am Bradley Manning. It's amazing the power of those simple words. What that, those words mean to each individual, I do not know. But I want to take a moment to share with you what that may mean to Brad. During our countless conversations, I had an opportunity to talk to him about his future. And I said, Brad, what do you want to do when this eventually comes to an end? And he told me that his dream would be to go to college, to get a degree. And as a young man, at that time he was 23, that makes sense. We all know that college degrees are pretty much the ticket to a productive future. So I asked Brad, well, with that degree, what do you plan on doing? And he said, I want to go into public service. And I asked him what he meant by that. He said, I, I want to join some sort of campaign group, go into public service, and perhaps one day run for public office. And I asked Brad, why would he want to do that? And he said, I want to make a difference. I want to make a difference in this world. I can tell you that standing here today, I hope that someday soon Brad can go to college. I hope someday soon he can, in fact, go into public service. But I am confident, as I stand here today, that Brad doesn't have to worry about making a difference in this world. He has made a difference.
Now, we all know Brad cannot be here tonight, but he knows tonight is happening. And he wanted me to personally thank each and every one of you. Thank you for taking the time to write to him, for signing petitions, for attending marches, rallies, and other public events. Thank you for writing to the military and to our government, complaining about his conditions. Thank you for donating to his legal defense, for volunteering at Courage to Resist and the Bradley Manning Support Network. But most of all, he wanted me to thank you for caring, caring about him. The battle that we have waged for the last two years could not have been fought without your help. And it has been a hard fight so far. I am confident by the time this case comes to a conclusion, the record of trial will be the longest record of trial in our military's history. And that record will reflect one thing, that we fought at every turn, at every opportunity, and we fought to ensure that Brad received a fair trial. Last Tuesday, the President of the United States signed into law the Whistleblower Protection Enhancement Act. As President Obama was signing this bill into law, Brad and I were in a courtroom for the start of his unlawful pretrial punishment motion. How can you reconcile the two? I don't know the answer to that question. One of uh, our nation's most famous whistleblowers, Daniel Ellsberg has, on multiple occasions, spoken out for Brad. History has been the ultimate judge of his courage and sacrifice. History has judged him well. I hope that history will judge Private First Class Bradley Manning in a similar light. I thank you for coming here today, and I thank you for listening to me.